I've been driving around my shop truck today doing some uh, remodeling on this rental house that I have. Just uh, finished up this backsplash and decided the radio in my truck sucks. So I'm going to take a few minutes out of my day and uh, throw a new radio in this truck. Uh, it's a 2001 Chevy Silverado uh, 2500 HD. Um, this is an install that you can do in under 30 minutes. Uh, it doesn't require any special tools. Uh, I'm going to show you step by step uh, what it takes to, to put one of these radios in. Um, the radio I chose is this Sony. Uh, picked it up at a really good deal and it's got Bluetooth. Uh, so I can stream my music uh, to my uh, radio wirelessly. Um, also do the hands-free calling. It's got 5 volt output, um, so if I had some amplifiers later, it's going to be um, a nice head unit for that. You're going to need a dash kit um, to make this uh, radio fit. Uh, we're using a Skosh GM1483B. You're also going to need an antenna adapter. GM uses a real small antenna. This adapter allows you to uh, fit your um, standard Motorola to the GM micro antenna. This is an MDA1B. And so we don't have to cut the factory harness, we're going to use this uh, stereo connector by Skosh. It's a GM02B. And you're going to need a handful of uh, white caps. Um, the tools, I mean, of course, you know, my traditional handy dandy flashlight uh, is always good to have. Um, a wire stripper and a crimper. And that's okay, really all you see. I've just been cutting some tile. That's the truck that needs a radio. We're going to go ahead and wire it up here real okay, quick. Okay, so first things first, we need to wire up this harness to the Sony. Uh, start stripping each one of the wires. Orange is illumination. The orange, uh, when you turn your headlights on, it'll communicate to the radio that the headlights are on, meaning you're driving at night, and it kicks the um, uh, lights in the radio a little bit uh, dimmer, so they, they aren't quite as bright when you're driving. Um, I always start with the power wires, um, you know, your ground wire, your power wires, before you do your speaker wires. Essentially, you just twist the wire together like that and crimp it. Move to your illumination. See, this goes really quickly. Doesn't take too long. Just make sure you get them twisted together good and make sure that you're using a crimp tool that is very good quality so you can get a nice good crimp. Uh, doing this you won't ever have any problems with your crimp connections coming apart. Once you have your power wires all crimped, then I recommend uh, moving to your speaker wires. Now the purples, this is your right rear speaker. I always recommend starting with the ones with the black stripe first on the purple set. Just to make sure that you're matching them up black stripe to black stripe, which is the negative wire. It's easy to get the purples together but have them reversed or any of the colors reversed. It's very important that you match stripe for stripe. Um, if you don't and you put these backwards, you're going to put the speaker out of phase with the other side, which will cause the speaker to not sound near as well as it should. So it is important that you go to the, um, you know, the negative to the negative, the positive. For whatever the positive. reason, in my mind, I, the reason why I do the speaker wires, the purple first, that's your right rear, which is your furthest away from you in the driver's seat. Then I go to the left rear, then I go to the right front, which is your gray wires. This really doesn't matter how you do it, um, which order you do it in, it really doesn't matter at all. 
But for whatever reason, my mindset goes that way, and uh, I believe that it makes me a little bit faster at what I'm doing, and I also make sure that I get the polarity correct and I don't miss any connections this way. Because I'm essentially just kind of running off of a checklist, making sure I'm getting all the connections correct. Okay, so I've made all the connections just about here. So I've tapped off all the unused wires and I've essentially wired the radio up so the wiring is, is done. You want to take some electrical tape and wrap it neatly around the wires keeping it tight. The factory wiring is going to be taped together like this in a harness. You're less likely to pinch a wire behind the dash if they're taped up nicely like this. If you don't have electrical tape or you don't like using electrical tape, you can use wire ties. Basically, you just take all these wires and tape them together, and now you've got a nice little neat harness. This is going to plug into your factory connector. That's going to plug into the radio, and that's it. Okay, so now you have the harness wired. I wanted to talk to you about the rest of the connections. Since this radio is a Bluetooth and does hands-free calling, we put this microphone above the rear view mirror, and then you run this wire down to the pillar, and it actually just plugs into the back of the radio. This radio has uh, USB ports um, both on the front of the faceplate and it also has a rear USB. Some people choose to put this over to the glove box or somewhere else in the vehicle. Um, this uh, will show you um, where to route this uh, USB on this particular vehicle. Okay, so here's one of the crucial points that a lot of people don't understand if they haven't done a lot of radios is how the radio actually mounts. This is what's called a sleeve. The sleeve slides around the, the radio and it has little locking tabs that lock in the side of the radio there. In case you want to remove the radio later, you use these keys and the keys basically slide along the side of the radio, unlocking these little tabs and the radio will slide right on GM vehicles and most vehicles, you will use a sleeve and a dash kit to mount the uh, radio in the vehicle. Toyotas, uh, many Toyota models, um, especially the older ones, they actually mount what's called ISO. And you take the factory brackets of the car and mount it um, to the side here using these screws and you wouldn't use the sleeve. But on this GM vehicle, you use the sleeve. So I lied, I forgot, you need a flathead screwdriver. This is the dash kit. This dash kit locks in with these little tabs. It basically just pushes in the dash and locks in. It's very simple, very easy to do. So what you do is you take the sleeve and you push it into place. And it's got little metal tabs that you actually take your flat-headed screwdriver or hook tool and bend them back. You want to make sure that you bend every tab that's available that's doing something that will help secure the radio in to the dash kit better. So carefully just go around and look and see which tabs need to be bent back in the sleeve. Once you've got them all bent back, you then can take the radio and slide it through the sleeve. Basically it just slides right in here and locks into place. And that's it. Okay, so that's what the radio looks like inside the dash kit there. Basically you've got your connection this so is the radio side, plugs in the back. I want to take a quick moment and talk to you about what's on the back of here. These are RCA outputs for a subwoofer. This is a rear RCA output and a front RCA output. This allows you to add amplifiers. You can run multiple amplifiers. It has 5 volt out. It will give you a good strong signal to your amp. 
You also have a microphone input. If you want more information on installing uh, Cirrus XM satellite radio, this is one that is ready for that and it basically plugs right into the back there. I've got a video that shows you how to do that. You just want to look for this little emblem on the front, Cirrus XM Ready. If it has that on the front, you can install the little uh, Cirrus tuner and have satellite radio. We've got to remove this uh, radio out. You can see the volume knob's broken off, the CD player doesn't work. Radio just kind of sucks, doesn't have the Bluetooth. I'm going to run the USB port right over there to the glove box. But first, uh, we need to remove the dash to pull the stereo out. And on this particular truck, what you want to do is turn your ignition on, put it down into first gear, do apply your parking brake so the truck doesn't roll, and then this dash just basically pulls off. Just grab on the top first, one of the top corners, and pull it towards you straight out. I want to show you guys one thing. The only real thing that you want to be careful with is you can see this hazard switch right here. Some guys when they're pulling on the dash, they'll bust the top of that hazard switch off. So make sure that you're careful. Okay, so just pull the dash out and I just set it right on the top there. Now to remove the radio, you've got a clip here and you've got a clip here. Basically you just stick your fingers in there and push it down and the radio slides right out. Then you unplug your antenna, pinch your wiring harness, and you've got it unplugged. Being this is a Bluetooth that. radio, is we need to put in our microphone. Good location for your microphone is just right up above the rear view mirror. Basically you just take the microphone and clip it up on the headliner there run the wire underneath the headliner and down this little pillar behind the dash back out over okay so you can see I've got my microphone wire ran behind the dash there and it runs up to the pillar and uh, basically runs my little microphone that I've got right there I've also ran my rear USB off the back of the unit. You can see this cord right here is running over in the glove box and is going to allow me to have the, the rear USB port hook up. The handy dandy flashlight is really useful when running these wires because you can shove the light back into the dash and look to see where there's holes where you can fish the wire through. Sometimes it works good to use a hanger or um, you know, wire fisher to get the wire through some of those tight spots. I was able to do it with just shoving my hand behind the dash and using this flashlight here. Now I need to hook up my little antenna uh, adapter so that the antenna for the radio was going to work. So locate your micro antenna, plug this in like, uh, like that there. Push these together pretty tight. They kind of lock into place once you get it all the way in there. But then I prefer to take some electrical tape. Get some electrical tape and wrap real tight around those two connections. This just keeps the antenna from coming apart later. They usually don't, but it's kind of a little extra precaution. Plug in our harness we wired up. Make sure everything's lined up correctly. Let's see goes like that, I believe, like this. Okay, 
So that snaps in. Then you want to kind of shove this back and out of the way. Let's locate your microphone wire and plug that in. And also plug in your antenna. So everything's plugged in. Now you've just got to neatly route the wires so that the radio has enough room back there. You see those little tabs there? Um, they basically just push in. And once it makes that snap, it's locked. Do that on both sides. I've got my cord coming out of my glove box there. I'm going to keep that nice and uh, wrapped up in the glove box. Occasionally might have an iPod or something just plugged in there with music. Um, also, I store music on a USB thumb drive and just leave it there in the glove box. You can put a lot of music on a thumb drive and they're cheap. Um, that's what I prefer to do. Okay, so basically just line everything all up, snap it all into place. Okay, so there we have it. We got the new Sony radio in here. Okay, so we got that baby working. Do it yourself, Bry, showing you how to do another radio install. Please watch my videos, like them, subscribe to my channel, and I'll show you more stuff, more do it yourself tips to keep you guys uh, in the know how to do some of this stuff.